What is respect? And why have nations even fought wars, sometimes even for centuries, over what you might call losing face or a lack of respect incurred? You might call it an ego wound or a narcissistic wound or a slap in the face emotionally or someone putting others down. Now, two ideas here that popped into my head the other day. First, Mr. President Nixon from the past said once after Watergate and his losing office, he said, I am not a crook. Second, I've heard the phrase before that some people in, quote, prison have said, I'm innocent of all charges. Well, upon more consideration, what might be the merit and accuracy of that claim, I'm innocent? Well, maybe not innocent of someone else dying in connection with them or suffering emotional pain in general, or that to their families who live after them, if so applicable, but rather innocent of how this all happened in the first place that it is inaccurate, the statement, how it happened, and part of why they then are in prison in the first place. This also playing out then, as per the concept of Patty Hearst in a bank robbery, was she innocent or not? Did she choose to participate, or did she uh, find herself compelled by the laws of nature, so to speak, of the universe to not have been able to do otherwise. This also, in the court of law, being addressed sometimes by the concept of uh, extenuating circumstances or the concept of declaring someone insane and thus um, not culpable also, not being, quote, a criminal in that sense. And so... In my mind, then, to say someone is a criminal is to disrespect them, and disrespect is to say they are a criminal in the sense that they did something that others found painful, and the other person had some part to play in it, some part, and that it was a part uh, of choice involved. Hence, a criminal or culpable or morally blameful aspect to the um, noxious context, shall we say. Alternatively, have we ever heard quicksand or lightning or a heart attack or a tornado being called a criminal? We might say uh, we were victimized or we were a uh, victim of weather but we never yet, I believe, have said that a tornado was a criminal. And hence, I'm innocent of the charges of being a criminal, a tornado would say. The same might be said of an airplane that has mechanical failure. It crashes and everybody dies on board. Yes, the plane had a part to play in people dying, a part was played also, of course, by people getting on the plane. But a third part would be lunacy to say the plane that had a component part to play in people's death was a criminal. That would be to disrespect the plane, basically. And I believe that plays out in the same manner, whether it came to Mr. Nixon or anything else, including all prisoners in prison. Yes, in the present day and age, we use prisons and laws and punishments in general to restrict certain activities from happening of a painful nature to others that are not in society's best long-term interest or the world's best long-term interest or hopefully as best adjudicated or thought out. I might add, if mankind goes down the tubes from global warming, we would not say that 
CO2 levels at too high a level, we're criminals, would we? We'd simply say it is as it is and try and regulate it. And in our sense, our best regulatory practices sometimes involve one aspect being prison to tell people these are the consequences you will have if you do this, thus regulating certain behaviors, so to speak. It's a um, feedback mechanism. On the other hand, though, to say that the people in prison or certain politicians or an airplane or tornado or lightning bolt striking someone were criminals is to say they chose to do so, which is a totally different bailiwick. And I think that's why Mr. Nixon said, I'm not a crook. I'm not a criminal. Because it couldn't have played out any other way given everything preceding it in my life and in society in general. Yes, he had a negative impact, but it not chosen, and so in that technical sense, he's not a criminal. He's not morally culpable, it could be argued. And to say otherwise, I believe, is part and parcel of what disrespect is all about. We all want to be told thus we did the best we could, given the laws of nature and all preceding things in our lives then. And to say others otherwise is to call someone basically a criminal and to call someone somebody who didn't do the best they could. Now, I will say, this is also prodded, this whole uh, little speech did he here, by having observed the governor of our state a year ago on television being accused by certain citizens of not having done enough about covid to get it under control and so on. He was basically being called a criminal for not choosing to do enough. And therein, I think, lies a real conundrum, a real double standard, a real problem. Because certain people can say phrases like, you're a criminal because you chose to do this and that, Hence the phrase, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime, i.e. don't choose to uh, have an impact that is harmful to others overall. And yet, when we address our leaders, uh, we don't tend to say all too often that they chose not to do such and such, and thus uh, they're criminals also and ought to go to prison, even for not having solved COVID sooner or uh, noting it still isn't solved. So where do you draw the line then? People in prison are there because they're told they chose to do certain things in part. Yet, do certain leaders escape uh, punishment by way of saying, well, they did the best they can with resources available and constraints in general, and it gets by at that. Uh, yes, that's the logical aspect. And yet, um, again, if people often in prison are there because of addictions that drove them to do things that involve pain to others, including stealing to get drugs or lying to get drugs, then might some people in top echelons called leaders have similar problems resulting in situations not getting resolved better, whether it's COVID, whether it's infrastructure problems, education, uh, the proliferation of porn and drugs, what have you. Uh, are we going to say it was by choice? Or maybe there are addictions afflicting leaders that are different typically than chemical-based ones holding them back. Only, where are there prisons full of people who have addictions for things other than the chemical ones, like heroin, say, meth, sales, what have you, or um, prostitution, as an addiction on the subscriber end? 
Where are the prisons for people who have status addictions? Where are the prisons for people who have control addictions or fame addictions that result in so many things not getting done and so many people getting hurt in general? If we're going to put people in prison thus for having chosen to sell drugs, which are called addictions, maybe we need to address whether there need to be prisons or the whole concept for non chemically based addictions uh, that are indulged in quite a bit by leaders all throughout history. Euphemistically speaking, one minister, for instance, I heard in church a year ago said that he spent time in prison for alcohol and drugs. And he talked of other addictions, like having a boat addiction. But he did not talk about status addictions, control addictions, relationship addictions, sex addictions, and so on. Noting, by the way, that Tiger Woods, the great golfer, went down the tubes for a while because of his sex addiction. But he did not go to prison for it. In part, he didn't market it. But it sure held him back from his golf performance. Maybe certain leaders have not solved a host of problems or uh, ameliorated the problems because they had addictions other than chemically based ones. Maybe these need to be looked at more. This whole concept coming more and more to my uh, awareness from having read a year ago and onward, the book by Dr. Ann Schaefe, a former PhD therapist and Cherokee Indian who died a couple of years ago. Her book, uh, When Society Becomes an Addict. And she's not just talking about chemically based addictions, but what she calls the process addictions, like uh, uh, workaholism and relationship addictions and so on. I might add, even conforming being an addiction and what it drives us to do all too often. And um, other addictions, too. If this is all we think of is chemically-based addictions and the impact, I think we need to go further and further and further. There have been inroads, but we need to go far further, I believe. And once again, getting back to the concept of respect. Respect being in my book, uh, what some people are saying they want so badly when they say they want to be understood, not just loved, i.e. in the sense of being given things or done to. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb has talked of this in videos of hers about relationships, that we want to be gotten. We want people to get us, to be understood. But what is it we want to be understood about? In my book, as of the last few months, it's to be understood that we are not culpable of things in the causative sense, by choice, that impact others harmfully, and that um, others um, um, have limited responsibility for, to handle on the other hand.